Hello, everyone. Welcome to the lecture series on health management. We discussed that the evolution of management theories can be divided into five major approaches. Historical background, classical approach, quantitative approach, behavioral approach, and contemporary approach. In this session, we will discuss the concept of the human relations movement under the behavioral approach. Three significant landmarks in the evolution of understanding and managing people were the human relations movement, the total quality management movement, and the contingency approach to management. The human relations movement was born from the Hawthorne studies, which were conducted from 1924 to 1932. Elton Mayo and Fritz Roethlisberger summarized it. Hawthorne Works was a large manufacturer operating in Illinois. There, managers asked a question, are our employees more productive in a well-lit environment than in a poorly lit environment? To answer their question, Hawthorne Works hired some consultants and commissioned a study. The first phase of the Hawthorne Studies was called the Illumination Study. It sought to measure the impact of light on productivity. The findings of the study were obvious and non-groundbreaking. They found that a well-lit environment at the workplace increases productivity. But the study was inconclusive because too many variables other than light could have affected worker productivity. The researchers had difficulty understanding why productivity increased. Later on, a series of other studies were conducted in Hawthorne Works. It was observed that working conditions such as a clean workstation, allowing employees to build and work in teams, regular breaks, length of the workday, company, Provided lunches and payment methods influence productivity. But the researchers made another observation that led to an idea taught in nearly every business textbook used in the last so many decades. The Hawthorne Effect. The Hawthorne Effect is a psychological phenomenon in which study participants change their behavior or performance in response to being observed by the researcher. Specifically, money, fear of unemployment, and managerial discipline were responsible for high output and not supportive supervision. Mayo headed the Harvard researchers at Hawthorne, advised managers to attend to employees' emotional needs in his 1933 classic, The Human Problems of an Industrial Civilization. Another theory in this domain is Theory X Theory Y. It was proposed by management professor Douglas McGregor. The theory depicts two sharply contrasting sets of assumptions about human nature, or we can say two opposing perceptions of employee motivation. Theory X says that most people dislike work. They avoid it when they can. While theory I says that, work is a natural activity, like play or rest, and people like it. Theory X says that most people must be coerced and threatened with punishment before they will work. People require close direction when they are working. While theory I says that people are capable of self-direction and self-control, if they are committed to objectives. Theory X says that most people actually prefer to be directed, while Theory I says that people generally become committed to organizational objectives if they are rewarded for doing so. Theory X says that people tend to avoid responsibility and exhibit little ambition, while Theory I says that the typical employee can learn to accept and seek responsibility. Theory X says that employees are interested only in security. While Theory I says that, 
The typical member of the general population has imagination, ingenuity, and creativity. Theory ye shared similarities with the human relations movement. Thus, both theories propose different human behaviors. An American psychologist, Abraham Maslow, developed a theory of hierarchical needs, which McGregor referred to in his book to indicate employee incentives to perform well. Maslow's theory, often called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, suggests that people are motivated by a series of needs that are arranged in a hierarchical order. The hierarchy consists of five levels. From lowest to highest in the hierarchy, those are physiological needs, safety needs, social needs, esteem needs, and self-actualization needs. This five-stage model can be divided into deficiency needs and growth needs. The first four levels are often referred to as deficiency needs or D-needs, and the top level is known as growth or being need. These needs must be fulfilled in a specific sequence. Number one, theological needs. These are the basic fundamental needs necessary for survival, such as air, food, drink, shelter, clothing, warmth, sex, and sleep. Number two, safety needs. Once physiological needs are met, individuals seek safety and security, including physical safety, financial security, employment stability, and a safe environment. Number three, Social needs. After physiological and safety needs are satisfied, people desire a sense of belonging and social connection. This includes the need for love, friendship, intimacy, and acceptance within social groups such as family, friends, and communities. Number four, esteem needs. Once social needs are fulfilled, individuals strive for recognition, self-esteem, and a positive evaluation of their abilities and accomplishments. This includes both external factors, such as achievements and respect from others, as well as internal factors, such as self-confidence and self-respect. And Number five is self-actualization needs. At the highest level of the hierarchy, individuals seek self-actualization, which involves reaching their full potential and fulfilling their personal goals. This includes pursuing personal growth, self-discovery, creativity, and fulfilling one's unique potential. Thus, Maslow's hierarchy of needs are physiological needs, safety needs, social needs, esteem needs, and self-actualization needs. However, it is important to note that not all individuals follow the same path, and there may be variations and individual differences in the pursuit and fulfillment of these needs.